session. Okay, cool. Now we're live. Just confirming. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. And today is May 24th, 2019. And this is uh, drop in math tutoring session number 29. Just uh, making myself available for people uh, that need a little mathematics, help with mathematics, high school mathematics specifically. So that's what the stream is about today. I'm just setting everything up from my end here. Um, that's what the stream is about today. Um, basically, um, in general, it's just an open discussion. We talk about whatever we want, um, but we try to gear it towards mathematics or physics or chemistry, sciences, basically academic stuff, mainly uh, stuff related to high school. Okay, obviously math centric. Um, aside from that, we're going to do this uh, probably every week for the next, um, probably for the next uh, month or so. Uh, until the end of the school year and then uh, we'll probably chill with it uh, um, unless people really want to continue and if people really want to continue with these live streams of, of just doing math sessions uh, we could definitely do um, maybe do them you know once every two weeks or once a month uh, until summer's over and then we'll start back up again uh, when the school year starts uh, in my part of the world anyway okay Thank you for hosting Aerocosmos. <laughs> um, and usually we just wait a few minutes uh, for people to pop in. If we're chatting about anything uh, that is not math related or even math related, if you have any questions or any, any, any concepts you wanna talk about, uh, just post them in chat and we'll make a little list and go through as much stuff as we can. I think what's gonna happen slowly over the next few years we're gonna get more and more uh, people popping in so I think it might be a good idea to start making a list of some of the things we might want to talk about during these live streams and, um, and just take it from there right uh, and of course this uh, we're gonna to try to make it math centric and uh, as long as we're staying on topic with math or sciences or whatever we don't go too far off tangents regarding politics economics down rabbit holes um, we'll definitely load up all the videos to bit shoot and if we are mass centric talking about sciences and not going down rabbit holes too much anyway we'll definitely load these up on YouTube as well uh, so people can uh, have access to them there as well because the name of the game is try to uh, have this platform available for people that want to learn mathematics and if you have a question about math, the odds are other people have a question about math, the same question about mathematics, right? That's one thing I tell my students a lot is uh, uh, never be afraid to ask questions. You'll never learn if you don't ask questions, right? If you just wait for people to feed you information, that means you're gonna have gaps in your education, your knowledge, in your under understanding of the world. And if you have questions that you wanna ask, then the odds are other people have the same questions so why not instigate uh, you know the flow of information just act as a node and ask the question and let the information come to me even if it's a simple question that you need just a minor connection from one concept to another concept okay aside from that that's it let's show oh, let me show you what i got uh as snacks as snacks here i got uh i got a little bit of cuckoo left over we got from like the live stream cooking session we did um, i guess monday right so monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday right so that's a few days of us eating cuckoos as, as our main dish uh, and i've been snacking on these uh, on a daily daily basis right um hello Gadgil Gadgil effects Gadgil effects Gadgil effects Gadgil effects Gadgil effects effects how are you doing uh, so it's a, it was a great cooking live stream we got enough food to feed us for about you know four days or so and as uh, I do have a sweet tooth so I got myself a little bit of tahini and maple syrup here 
just in case I feel like a little bit of sweet, which I do right now, actually. Power of food, really amazing. If you want something substantial to tie you over and just, just nourish you, right? And if you need a little bit of kick, this is tahini, which is basically sesame seeds ground up and maple syrup just mixed together. That's it, right? It's a fantastic uh, little nibble thing. And usually, not usually, I do eat it like this a lot, just with a spoon, but you can also eat it with uh, just bread. Just toast some bread and put a little bit of this on it or dip it, use it as a dip for bread, really, toasted bread and just eat it. It's fantastic. We learned this. Our family learned to do this from uh, a family friend, uh, elder gentleman. He's no longer with us. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, many moons ago. Um, but we learned uh, this from him back in the guess uh, early 90s right because it's something that he that he would do and he went oh what's this our family was like oh that's cool so we started doing it right fantastic and he was he was from turkey he was a turkish uh, he's armenian turkish and he would he said a lot of people in turkey for breakfast they would mix up the tahini with maple syrup or uh, honey and have that martin how are you doing how's life hope you're doing well brother Hope you're doing well. It's a crazy, beautiful world we live in, eh? <laughs> crazy, beautiful world. Interesting world. I've been doing a lot of mathematics with students. It's uh, exam season, right? Uh, final exams. So I spent time reviewing with my students that I've had for a while. And usually at this time of year, you start getting panic messages, new clients that are like, my kid is failing. Uh, oh my God, <laughs> oh, what's going on? <laughs> uh, we need help in the last minute, right? Basically in the last month or last two months of school. And uh, one of the things I do is I try to lessen my load of work that I need to do with my older students because I usually try to get them prepared for the exams way before the exams are coming up, right? So I'm reviewing constantly through the year and filling gaps. So most of my students are pretty well prepared going into the exams. So I've done the front end work from that side, the back end work. Uh, so I coast it there with the new students that I get, I kick it into high gear and just power, power, teach them, right? The UK is much brighter now. The way that yeah, more than I heard. I, oh my God, her little. Uh, this is just a little politics, but it's. I don't know if it's humorous politics, but uh, as Martin said, the witch has fallen. Uh, I watched May's little. Uh, I love. I love my country. Sobbing thing she did, which was people were commenting that she should get an Oscar for that performance, right? Because I don't think anybody in the UK. Um, well, I mean, you know, you know what? I tend to believe her that she cares about the UK. She cares about, but I think uh, she cares about money and power a lot more than the citizens of the United Kingdom, right? You can still care for something, but if you care for something even more, you're willing to sacrifice that other thing that you care for, right? So um, that's my take on it. Uh, yeah, it's a little brighter. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I heard uh, who did I read? I read someone saying that. Uh, oh, I think it was uh, Caitlin Johnson uh, just tweeted out uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago or something like that, that she hopes that Boris Johnson becomes uh, the new leader of the her party. I always mix up the names of the parties, right? Because the illusion uh, will be lifted of how ridiculous they are. Brexit must be abandoned. That's uh, that's your take, Martin. 
I don't know if Brexit's going to be abandoned, man. Uh, they're going to try to abandon it. But, man, if I was a UK citizen, conservatives, oh, yeah, the conservatives, that's right. Boris, Jeff, Boris Johnson, the leader of the conservatives. That would be like... But there's a lot of farce representatives of certain organizations and certain interests that are putting these people in power to get their agenda through right why not a monkey why not boris uh, i don't want to say monkey why not why not uh why not a joke i guess i don't know i don't know what you call all this all this is crazy i'm a liberal democrat democrats uh guy i'm assuming that g is supposed to be a b or yeah b is supposed to be a g uh yeah for me i have tendencies from everywhere all the different so-called categories of political economic mindset the one thing i stand by is learn your mathematics learn your mathematics it will empower you to do whatever it is you want to do if you want to be a may you can be a may johnson johnson you can be anybody uh, but better if you know mathematics no brexit would be bad another eu referendum not followed through yeah no i cannot see them not going through brexit really i think uh racer kill i think uh by the way we're going to talk about this stuff in politics but i think uh, uh you know what i can't even imagine what the repercussions would be i really can't i really can't i think people are misjudging how important it is uh, to many people i think people are misjudging it okay. what about mathematics what are we doing with mathematics what should we do with mathematics it's funny i love the mathematics stuff i love doing right i love doing the streams i love doing the math the uploading the streams to youtube even though i you know ideally i would like to record it with the pal mic and stuff i just don't have the time and the capacity and all the equipment set up to do this every time set it up so we're just uploading the live streams to youtube and bit shoot and stuff but these live streams that go on youtube they get the lowest hits lowest views out of all of my videos in large part right <laughs> like the the interest uh, in the mathematics of it is is not as great as some of the other stuff that I put out right um, but I love putting these out and I will continue to put these out right because I think it's very important and I think in the in the big scheme of things in the limit this math content that we're creating uh, just Q and A and just this and that. It will go phenomenally well with the other math content we're creating that will help people uh, in the long run to learn mathematics if they need to. Maskov, Raven, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome, Eduardo. How's life? Welcome to another uh, math live stream. Even though we haven't done any mathematics yet. <laughs> we're just saying hi we're just saying hi i've been doing a lot of mathematics lately so um you know just with my students and new students coming in and stuff like this so if you guys want i could teach you something or if you have a question we could definitely deal with it um but instigating a whole new series topic um i think i'll hold off until a certain question comes on right I found you through comics batman men are reading nice 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 the batman reading was uh the venom reading uh, uh legends of the dark knight and it was uh number six and martin i consider those i believe it was number six anyway or number five number six number six uh, num one, yeah each story at the beginning was five issues long so the story of venom uh, the, uh, from the Legends of the Dark Knight and it's not the Venom that people are thinking about from Marvel Comics we're not talking about the symbiote uh, Spider-Man symbiote right we're talking about Venom and the drug the steroid really that Batman takes to become stronger and as far as I'm concerned 
that is one of the greatest Batman stories told okay it was fantastic Bane Venom Bane Venom yeah Dante how are you doing what up brother what up brother really that story arc was phenomenal uh, that sealed the deal for me for um, Legends of the Dark Knight for Batman I consider that series to be equivalent to Hellblazer uh, because it was very mature oriented hey Chicho how's it going ah great lasagna doing well brother thank you very much enjoying things it's been getting warm but today is chilly I even have I brought over a toque just in case I get cold I put my toque on <laughs> and this is a new to toque by the way this is a new toque I got I got it as a present how do you guys like my new toque I like it the colors match this <laughs> these things but I think it go with a it go really well with a bright color shirt a happy toque right it's a happy toque I like toques that's one of the things I like I have a small collection of toques to grow much larger over the next few decades stylish <laughs> nice. I like it you cute you cute how do you spell tuki tuk. I know them as beanies yeah beanies uh, how do you spell tuk I don't know tuk t-u-k tuk that's tuk tuk I don't know I don't know how you spell tuk that's it yeah t-u-q-u-e that's right that's how you spell it so what's happening with Assange <laughs> is he getting extra dude like I've mentioned this a long time ago right I mentioned this for many years now I've been following WikiLeaks and Julian Assange what's happening with WikiLeaks and Julian Assange is one of the most important things that uh, is happening in the world okay and it will be remembered uh, it will be studied for decades and if we last centuries for centuries to come any news that you're listening to that you've been you've been following that hasn't had wikileaks and julian assange as their one of their number one topics that they have been talking about for x how are you doing talking about for the last few years is a garbage news source stop trusting them okay start to look into who has covered a lot of content a lot of material regarding wikileaks and julian assange and who have been on the right side of history and the right side of history is for freedom of information free flow of information protecting journalism protecting publishers and the right for citizens of a country to know what is being done in their name and with their funds especially if they are war crimes because the citizens of that country if they are funding war crimes and they are happy to be oblivious on what they're funding what they are responsible for then that that society is heading towards a dark dark place okay what is happening with wikileaks and julian assange is one of the most important things that has ever happened in human history period anybody that says otherwise is delusional is oblivious they are completely misinformed uninformed or just a shill for the for the corporate propagandists okay <laughs> that's it we can talk about this tomorrow a lot more in portuguese is tuca nice i like that tuca that's in brazil too portugal and brazil i don't know which other countries speak portuguese uh night night how are you doing hey chicho hope you're enjoying your friday very nice too thank you brother thank you yeah i'm enjoying uh, the friday today uh, i've been doing a lot of gardening and taking care of the plants and flowers and stuff lord lord how are you doing good evening everybody in recent you news in belgium elections are coming up european belgium and federal elections yeah the european belgium elections too and federal belgium federal elections 
and multiple news sources have left certain politicians out of the polls etc because they have another wow that's crazy eh? and by the way a lord that is what's happening in the united states united states as well right torsi tulsi gabor is getting serious foothold within the united states within the <laughs> okay i'm gonna be uh non-pc with the more intelligent people within the sit within the united states tulsi gabor is having getting a serious foothold because she's saying things that both the left and the right and people agree on right except for the corporate propagandists they don't agree with what she's saying right so she's getting a serious foothold underground grassroots foothold but the mainstream media is leaving her out but for the most part some of the things that i've seen come up i don't really watch mainstream media julian is a great man a, uh, see when we when i say that julian uh, martin i agree with you julian is a great man a lot of people misinterpret that as saying he's a kind man he's a good man he is uh he's someone likable likable right but that's not what it means right i've had people turn to me and say do you like julian assange i go dude i like what he represents what he's done he's a great man what he has achieved what he's put it his neck on the line for he's put his neck on the line for humanity and these people are asking me if i like the guy it's like what does it matter if i like the guy or not he's sacrificing himself for the betterment of civilization for human beings in this world right he's a great man period right i started to follow a new source right now brazil 247 i haven't uh, followed uh, any ever they don't talk about assange but it's brazil only news uh so okay that's good if it's if it's local news brazil only right on pepe escapar supports them right on that's good so i think they're they're legit awesome i tr i like pepe escobar I trust pepe escobar as far as i know portugal brazil mozambique speaks portuguese and angola speaks portuguese too wow that's cool that's super cool Zania. i didn't know i didn't know about mozambique and angola i guess those were the portuguese colonies right yeah though i'm sure there's more yeah i uh, eduardo might know i voted yesterday you voted martin yesterday cool cool you voted in european elections yesterday I, I assume martin but in belgium people are uh realizing this and when the mainstream news now comes on the streets people actually block their cameras so they so try to disrupt <laughs> really that's cool this is was deleted by mod thanks for taking care of business whoever the mod was uh, oh night night nice thank you very much for taking care of business night night my relatives watch msn all the time and have no idea who tulsi is despite her popularity in the serious political communities yeah actually um, uh mask of radio that's that's a great way of saying it serious political communities i'm going to start using that okay that's less more politically correct and i think it's more accurate right Tulsi is awesome. Listen to her interview in the Joe Rogan podcast. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Loved Fifth Estate, but made him out to be a little eccentric. Fifth Estate, that's that a TV show, but are we talking about uh, um, uh, Assange? Is that what they did, Martin? Uh, EU elections, yeah, coming up on Sunday for us, Austria. It's Sunday for Austria, wow different countries vote on different days this weekend really that's crazy yeah all elections eu related are are on sunday i'll have to wake up early i guess haha <laughs> cool sunday in france as well wow okay so this sunday should be interesting yes european election now i'm getting all excited gang yes european elections i hear the brexit party are going to win a lot of, yeah brexit party in the uk guaranteed as far as at the polls I've seen, it's taking like 40%. They're polling 40%. And by Sunday, I think they're going to be polling a lot higher, right? Unless people actually, the conservatives or whoever <laughs> the May party is, they go, oh, May is stepping down. Maybe they'll do better this time. If they fall for this thing, I think that's the reason May came out and said, I'm resigning in June, right? To at least 
prevent some of the people that are moving towards the Farage's party and the other party to sort of go oh, okay come back come back May is stepping down I hope it doesn't work I hope those people just the leading the governing party in the UK I hope they basically get knocked out right they don't do they do not deserve a single vote in the UK really really they've proven themselves to be complete sellouts and not having the best interest of the citizens of the UK in in mind period movie about yeah movie about, oh the uh, the fifth state movie about Julian Assange that's right that's right yeah 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 we have a TV show a news show or we used to anyway it was called the fifth state in Canada and I got confused with that I think the fifth state still goes on I'm not 100% sure I don't watch it I haven't watched it for a very long time 15 years or so uh, to all my European friends won't wise and smart our freedom may depend on it 100% Lord and one thing I love really about uh, these streams and stuff like this we have a lot of Europeans or a lot of Europeans uh, are here okay in general we have a lot of Europeans I don't know why I don't know why I've attracted so many Europeans um, but thank you for being here you guys have been educating me about Europe and I love this interaction with the different communities uh, different countries in Europe and uh, it's phenomenal as a Canadian thank you I appreciate it uh, Chicho do you have a video or anything on Brexit uh, I have. Find it for you. <laughs> Watch this. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna find it for you. Hopefully, we don't lose the stream. I don't think we will. Hopefully, not. I'm gonna link you my Brexit video. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm giggling. So the camera's shaking. Here, let me let me give you this link and I'll read you what what the title is okay here I'll give you the link think oops where is the chat I gotta bring out the chat here's the chat here's the link okay and the title of the video is comic book hall number six Legend legends of the geomancer valiant comics and the description is ASMR math saw spoken review and my video on brexit is as soon as, <laughs> as soon as I can't stop laughing as soon as the vote was done on Brexit where all of a sudden the the corporate uh, propagandists the corporate political class when they realized oh my god the people in the UK voted to <laughs> voted for Brexit they wanted to leave the European Union the the pound dropped a little bit right so the pound relative to Canadian dollars US dollars and stock dropped right and there was one auction I was following that had five copies of Legend, Legends of the Geomancer number one up for sale right and I sent the guy a message saying um, will you um, you know I made him an offer for all five of the comics right and he accepted my offer so I bought <laughs> Bought Legends of the Jew. I just did it as a Brexit celebration because I was ecstatic. I was very happy, right? And Canadian dollar uh, pound had dropped relative to the Canadian dollar, so I was getting a little bit of discount, like a saving like eight dollars or ten dollars or something. So my Brexit video is me buying Legends of the Jew Master number one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm cracking up, but this is exactly the way i felt when brexit passed um, and i did the buy right hey chicho hope you're well brother i'm doing well richard how are you doing we're calling the milkshake oh my god i can't believe that milkshake stuff going on yeah, is, seriously is it being called a milkshake election that's crazy liam how are you doing how is how's life welcome to a stream belgium here of course Dutch speaking part Flanders the milkshakes are kind of funny they're kind of scary 
Mask of a Raven. Uh, I don't. I, I, I do not agree with, with violence. I don't agree with silencing people. Right. So these milkshake attacks, and they are attacks. Right. They're meant to silence people. And for me, I will. I will. You know, I'm saying it now, but will I fight to the death? For you to have the right to say what you need to say i don't know if i have the, the the willpower to fight to the death but i'll fight to my capacity to help you to make sure you have the platforms available to you to speak your mind even even if you totally 100 percent disagree with me or i disagree with you right even if you're 100 percent opposed to everything that i stand for you have the right to speak your mind and I will never never try to silence you I may engage you disagree with you uh, fight you verbally to to the ends of time but I will never ever try to violently suppress your right to speak it's a great time to watch in Europe it is 9 p.m. in Germany nice nice Pepe how are you doing how is life welcome to a stream you're welcome chicho thanks for your great content my pleasure merci i'm assuming you're from france uh anna how's life hey chicho wondering what the stream schedule is for this weekend uh one stream tomorrow morning 8 a.m tomorrow morning about current events which we're talking about right now right so 8 a.m tomorrow morning um uh, stream about current events I know it's going to be really early for people in Canada and the United States but I had a request from someone in Europe uh, last stream saying uh, that uh, it'd be great to have a stream early on regarding current events and specifically one of the ones was uh, about uh, the polar uh, how everything is being divided into part two parts I forget which term is for it right so that's what we're doing tomorrow discord thanks lord i'm laughing so hard i'll watch it now night 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 mask yes and everyone is getting strawberry flavored but no chocolate what chocolate is delicious strawberry is the best milkshake flavor i'm no chocolate lover oh you're not a chocolate lover i love chocolate uh strawberry is good too but chocolate milkshakes are wow, wow so good vanilla i like too but i ask where you're from i'm in canada uh, I'm in Canada ancestry bloodwise Armenian born in Iran and I'm basically West Coast Canadian that's my mentality okay I've lived here most of my life so I fit in really well here okay milkshakes are yummy but shouldn't be in elections <laughs> they shouldn't be in elections you know what they should do if I was Farage and the right leaning party parties and i guess it's the right people that are getting milkshakes thrown at them i would throw a milkshake party really if i was having an event i would hire milkshake trucks right and give out free milkshakes to everyone i would use the weapons that are being used against me to commit violence against them i would embrace it okay i would grab bring milkshake trucks and give everybody a milkshake okay on the house that's if i had the funds of course okay it's like appropriating the uh the pink triangle right it's like it's this tactic has been used throughout history by for good and ill this would be good and as far as i'm concerned i'm actually posted a news article in discord about protests during the elections okay thanks lord awesome are milkshake violence throwing milkshakes at someone it is for sure throwing milkshakes at people it is I think once the first milkshake incident happened it just became a bit of a uh, viral trend if I'm honest yeah and usually the weak-minded follow the viral trend especially if they're uh, about committing violence hey Chicho another week is ending thanks for putting current events on morning this time my uh, germany you were the one that asked for it wasn't it uh i think so and my pleasure uh, and by the way that's what i try to do if you guys have topics you want to discuss or if you want this thing sort of what we're doing sort of to go in a certain direction 
you know post a comment uh, ask me either on discord YouTube here wherever I'll try to I'll try to fit uh, fit things in I try I can't promise I try okay well if you're mad go with your lactose intolerant the earth is flat we talked about flat earth that really depends on your perspective Neil right we can talk about it if you want again I'll prove it to you that the earth could be flat if you have a if you have a very narrow uh, if you have short vision right but the earth is round if you have a bigger vision volume of a cone can we go over that sure how to calculate sure let's do life is good how about you doing good thoughts on the highway <laughs> boycott uh, there is uh, one basically it's a trade war Pepe right um, so it's uh, it's about trade war and technology and stuff it, it's it's huge uh, very very important very important uh, the shoe isn't throwing the occasional milkshake but people engaging each other to keep doing it yeah it's somewhat problematic like why not bring paint guns instead of for example yeah first they came for the guns then they came for the knives soon dairy will be a regretful substance yeah seriously are we gonna ban dairy will you cover linear algebra at some point if you like uh but basic linear algebra i'm not going to do determinants and matrices right now okay volume of a cone uh, we need the formula volume i think it's four thirds one third pi r squared times h or four thirds i gotta look that up does someone want to look up the volume of a cone volume of cone i'll look it up as well let me look it up while i so it is it is this one one third okay cool uh okay that's correct pi r squared a i think divided by three must have had uh dante yeah okay cool 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 let me just get caught up on the street uh things really quick unfortunately i might be outside visiting a friend tomorrow when you're current oh that's too bad that's unfortunate germany so if i miss it i might rewatch it later okay awesome just uh wouldn't display properly yeah you had the div the revision sign okay awesome dante that the marijuana came into existence as it grew on the tomb of King Solomon through his knowledge worth of <laughs> Google. Oh, nice, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, you basically need integration to calculate the volume of corn. Well, if you if you you get the formula, you get the formula from integrating the uh, the, 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 the the surface area, I guess, or something like this. But once you have the formula, you don't need cal calculus right you just need the formula so this is all we need to calculate the volume of a cone unless we're talking about driving the volume of a cone then you need calculus to do it right but basically volume of a cone is it's all based on the radius and the height right and the height so all you do is just plug in these two numbers now there's different ways that could ask you the same question right so for example in the most simple form we'll do one here we'll leave this drawing up so let's assume question was was this right question was find volume uh, of a cone uh, that is that is i don't know 10 centimeters uh, long long and has a i don't know what do you uh, what do you refer to that the the radius of the surface a radius of the top of the cone is five centimeters right with radius uh, of five centimeters for the top top of the cone right sorry about my writing but usually i don't even write it I just go, I just, because all we care about is this right all you care about is this uh, 10 centimeters long right and radius of five right once you got 10 centimeters 
long height and a radius of 5. You just plug it in, right? So this becomes 1 third pi times the radius is 5, 5 times, oh, 5 squared, my apologies, times 10, right? 5 squared is 25, 25 times 10 is 250, 250 pi, 250 pi over 3, right? That's the volume of the cone. And we, since we're talking about centimeters, don't forget the units, put the center, centimeters in there, right? Now, this question can come to you in a diff different ways as well. Sometimes they give you this, right? Sometimes they give you this distance here. They call this S usually. Now, before we do that, let me just check the chat, make sure I didn't do anything wrong and see if there's any build up on this we need, right? <clears throat> I'm doing math and uh, math A level and have exams in a month. I haven't started revising. What do I do? Start revising, start reviewing. Is it enough time? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I don't know what math A level is, uh, but a month of, if you, you're serious about it, a month, you should be able to learn almost any subject in mathematics as long as you got some of the background that you need to learn right you just have to take it seriously it may mean that you need to study multiple hours a day right just to give you an example for me there was one course i took that was the hardest math course i've ever taken it was a systems of systems of uh, it, it required you to look at systems of equations and do multiple integrations and uh, it was applied mathematics second level the second second course the second semester it was so difficult I studied 10 days straight for that course studying anywhere between 10 to 14 hours a day and they didn't have linear algebra so I had to teach myself linear algebra I grabbed the linear algebra book learned the linear algebra and then learned the stuff and I passed the course I didn't do phenomenal but I passed you can do it really if i can do it you can do it are you good at math uh mask of raven is asking liam which field of math which field of math exactly uh right before we start let's get this clear do you have a uh friend do you have a fridge james well i don't know what that refers to you can integrate the cross uh section sections dependent on the height uh all one one cone like shapes have a volume of this okay cool so what's going on with race killer is mentioning regarding uh needing calculus to do this because what you can do is basically you can draw the cross section of the of the cone so here's your cross section let's just make it like this okay so our calculations become simple so it's centered on the y-axis and through calculus the way you figure out the volume of this is basically you take this thing and you integrate it which means you're looking at the third dimension and all you're doing is rotating this right once you rotate it you create a cone which you can get the volume for that's where the calculus is really coming in i i hope i'm right i'm going by memory from like 20 35 years ago right uh Liam, you indicate what is zero divided by zero undefined you can't divide by zero i have heard a lot of different theories on it different opinions on it strictly speaking if someone says zero divided by zero this is undefined i don't know if that's the right symbol to use for it let's say undefined undefined however if someone gives you a function right if the above if this is a function where you have something here and something here and if you want to understand what this function does for a limit right as you approach a certain number or if you go to infinity and when you're simplifying this you get zero over zero you need further analysis because you can narrow you can approximate what it might be based on the functions you're dealing with okay so it's not as straight out as having the number zero over the number zero okay everyone can be good at math if uh, they try to learn i agree i am from the uk how many hours do you recommend as many as you need if i was you liam 
I would start off figure out where where the gap is what you're missing right because the odds are the reason you're overwhelmed is because you haven't done the earlier stuff so go back to the beginning and start reviewing if you understand the material then just keep on moving forward do maybe one or two questions if you're doing sample questions I don't know math a what it what it entails uh, what it's covering but whatever it is because it's a I'm assuming it's earlier on so you got to do questions problem so try one or two if you're getting them right just keep on going if you hit a snag a place where you don't understand something then spend more time on it until you understand it and then move forward right don't if you don't understand a certain concept don't jump too far ahead sometimes you can do that depending on the course because this one section might not be related to the other core material but that's something you're gonna have to decide me too I did a level math in 1990 wow cool very very true I only asked because he's only got a month for a level math hopefully he has a strong background that's the word I should uh, uh, I should have used did you do math at university I ask uh, Liam are you oh Martin okay he's asking Martin uh, six form six form six form six form boop, boop. <laughs> it's either uh, plus or minus infinity it's either plus or minus infinity so basically what that means is here let me take this down basically what that means is here's your x-axis in general this is your f of x in general when they say plus or minus infinity they're looking at what happens to the function as you go this way towards positive infinity or that way towards negative infinity right so they want to know I don't know whatever the function might be right if it's this I'm drawing just a polynomial but whatever it is okay I did go to university but I studied uh, psychology graph theory is a really great topic graph theory is a really great topic uh, the limit of x over x as x approaches zero is one so okay you can take the derivatives mask of raven and stuff right uh, it's advanced level chicho pro tip if a text book doesn't have a detailed section on solutions and tables of contents put that book down go find another book <laughs> yeah that's that's what i mentioned during that book readings and stuff right how to study uh, that and hannah thank you for thank you for reminding us of that right so if you got a textbook and it has problems and there's no solutions or examples of how to do some of those problems put the book down go find another book thank you Hannah that part of the video I've rewinded so many times because it triggers my smart <laughs> nice I love that video because it's informative would it be possible if uh, you could explain normal distribution for me yeah surely yeah. let's do normal distribution I'm gonna take all this down I can do basic normal distribution with you okay let me give my I laugh too much and I made myself <laughs> turn the Brexit thing <laughs> just cracked up uh, there's 24 7 Bob Ross channel there should be a 27 Chicho channel for its small show purposes so no Liam you're not bothering this is about mathematics you got questions we uh, we deal with it right so a normal distribution okay first thing you should ask yourself when you're thinking about normal distribution is what branch of mathematics is this right and this is statistics really right so what uh, is a normal distribution used for and what is the mechanism behind analyzing using the normal distribution right so whenever you're talking about mathematics you should always have a purpose in mind why are you studying this what's the purpose of this technique what is it that they're talking about right really keep this in mind this is ridiculously important right because that puts you in context it allows you to associate that with the real world right so it gives you purpose for learning this thing right because it is a tool that you might end up using in the real world normal distribution stats also lots of functions 
and calculator for that. <laughs> yeah. So basically, it's this. Okay. Just imagine if you want to try to understand a certain system. Okay. So let's assume we have a box here. And this box could be anything, right? It could be a country. It could be uh, you collecting data from nature. It could be you trying to understand a certain business model. It could be anything. Okay. Really appreciate this. This data set, this system that you're trying to understand can be anything. Okay. So let's assume you acquire the data from this, right? So this is you. This is you. I used to be able to draw better eyes. How do you draw eyes? I used to do this with physics, right? So this is you looking at the system, right? Looking at the system, you're going, wow, I'm trying to understand the system. What's going on, right? How do I make use of the system, right? Here, let me draw, let me make this better. So I, I, I don't look ridiculous trying to draw a line and it looks very retarded, right? So here is, here's you, here's your mouth, here's your eye, right? That's, I don't know if that's any better, but it shows a face, right? So let's say you're looking at the system. Actually, I guess your eyes are looking at the system, right? Your chin is not looking at the system. So let's make this more accurate, right? So you're looking at the system. You're going, I want to understand the system, okay? And what you're doing is collecting data. When you're looking at the system, you're going to look at, you're going to collect data. You got, th there's absolutely no way when you look at a system that you will not be able to collect data because data is information. So even if you're just sitting there, right? And looking at people walking by, you're going to go, oh, wow. Today, a lot of people are wearing red shirts. Your mind automatically does that. Because one thing you have to appreciate is us human beings, we're uh, basically pattern recognition machines, really. We're so good at pattern recognition that we find patterns where there are no patterns, right? Hence, people go down rabbit holes and then later on they realize, oh man, this thing and this thing have nothing in common. I just saw a pattern when there was no pattern, right? So you're sitting here looking at the system whatever this might be might be the elections in the united states might be nature you're looking at the birds in the area it might be you looking at your business trying to collect trying to understand this business model right so you're collecting information so data is coming here data right you might be really interested in the system where you just don't want to just have a minor understanding of what the system is doing you're actually writing down recording data right sometimes when you're driving you see people sitting there recording data right they're working for the city trying to understand an intersection right and most likely trying to change the light patterns or introduce lights or whatever it is trying to direct that traffic in a certain way right so it's not just enough just to sit there and go, oh, there's lots of traffic here. You need to collect data. What type of traffic? Bikes, motorbikes, cars, trucks. How fast are they going? How many pedestrians there are, right? So you're collecting a lot of data, right? So this person is sitting here, right? Here's their hand, right? Here's a pen, and they're collecting data, right? So you're looking at the system, collecting data, you know writing this data down what do you do with data once you do this you take this data and you graph it whatever the system is right different systems that you're looking at collect different bits of information right and one thing you end up doing in general is you take two of the data points two of the variables in the system right for example if you're looking at an intersection it might be the time of day and the number of automobiles right so we're not even separating you know motorbikes cars and trucks you're going to categorize them all as one thing and you're going to say okay those are moving vehicles whatever you're going to call them right and the time of day would be your other variable okay i thought there was an emphasis on visuals when i was learning no distribution but my prof got nothing on this diagram <laughs> hilarious right 
So this is this is what we got, right? So we're looking at a system collecting data, recording that data. And then you pick two of the variables here. We don't know what they are. We don't know what the system is. So let's call them X and Y, right? So we're going to take X and Y. And we're, first of all, which we want to know if these are related, right? Are these two variables related, right? So what we do is we take this data and we put it on X, Y graph, X, Y, okay? So we start graphing this data, right? If we get a graph like this, you could pretty much say that X and Y are not related. They have nothing to do with each other, right? Easy enough. So you come to a conclusion that X and Y are not related. Maybe you say, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I collected more data than just X and Y. I'm gonna substitute this with W, another data point that we collected to see if X and W are related, right? And when you graph X and W, you get something like this. You go, oh, those two might be related. That looks like a line. So you go, oh, you analyze the data, you do regression analysis and stuff like this, and you come up with a best fit line and you go, okay, X and W are related like this. Easy enough, right? But you've collected more variables than just X, Y, and W. Maybe you've collected other variables, right? So another variable you might have is, I don't know, what's a variable we use in statistics? I don't know, but I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna call it F of X, right? f of x would be just a function, right, that is dependent on x. So it's just another variable. So instead of writing y, right, I'm going to say I want to know if y is related to x. So instead of writing y, I'm going to call it f of x. We found out that y was not related to f of x, but w was. So w was a function of x. So we're going to look at another variable with the same thing. So we're just calling it f of x. So let's say you graph this and you end up finding this out right how was that professor that drew oh he did it with chalk okay let's say you find this out you go whoa that's a neat graph what, what is that? Okay, so you say, okay, let's graph, make this top solid, right? So you go, okay, I'm gonna draw the outline for this and it looks like this. That's cool, okay. That's called a normal distribution. That's what we've ended up calling it, right? Just like when you call this a line, that's a line. Where did we come up with the name line? I don't know. <laughs> it was the line, right? Who came up with it? I don't know. Okay. That's why this is called a linear linear function, right? That's called a line. This is called a normal distribution, okay? And this graph has certain properties, just like the equation of a line, right? If I draw a line, the general equation for a line is y is equal to mx plus b, right? This is the y-intercept, and that's the slope of a line, right? So when you draw a line, you can come up with a function that represents that line, right? And then you can read things off from that line. Normal distribution is the same way, right? This has certain properties, okay? One of the properties is this. If you cut this thing right down the middle, right, right down the middle, for a normal distribution, the graph is a probability density function. Sorry, it's a probability density function, but um, what do you call it? I'm just doing it this way just to associate it with it, okay? By the way, basically, thank you for correction, right? I, there's a reason why I've said um, I'm not doing any hardcore stats or any hardcore calculus because I don't... I don't have my terminology, right? Okay, so one of the properties is this. Right here, you call this x 
with a bar on top, which is the average of the data. You find out if you take the average of the data, the y is supposed to be a probability that x occurs. Okay, cool. So this is supposed to be the probability of x occurring, right? Probability of x. Okay. So, and what's the symbol for it? Yes, basically. That's the y, okay? So if you take the average of all the data, right? If you take all the averages and you plot that point on there, 50% of the data will be here, 50% will be there. So it cuts the data set, the probability of X occurring right down the middle. That's cool, okay? The other thing that happens is, this is completely symmetrical. So if you go Here, let me one unit away and we call this one standard deviation away from the mean okay if you go here this part I forget what it is is 65 or 68 percent of the data is within that range okay and if you go two standard deviations away from here to here like 95 percent of the data is within there have you ever grown any vessel rooms are they profitable i know profit i don't do profit in regards to that or that's not entirely correct is probability density around x in fact the probability is calculated by taking the area under the curve yeah oh yeah and this is area by the way that's why i'm shading this in right so it's not really I guess the data well it is the data points okay the integral of that is always one uh, yes the probability if you take the area of all this it comes out to one this goes on forever by the way comes out to one which really represents 100 percent of the data okay that is always one and if you want to calculate the probability of your x being between uh two numbers you have to calculate the integral yeah and there's tables for this right so basically let's assume this x is here and you go to here x minus oh what's the symbol you use for it is it sigma is, is that it i keep, man i haven't looked at the stuff for a while right and let's call it oh it's just x sorry the sigma is in the bottom x minus x and if you take this point here and you make this x plus x right x1 and x2 that's like saying uh between this number and this number if you want to find out what percent of your data lies within those two ranges right there's tables you can look at that give you that data and they're all decimal so for example if this was so like someone said one and this was equal to two okay and if this was in the middle, then this would be uh, one and a half. This data point would be 1.5, the mean, right? Or the average. And if you want to look at this, then, you know, you can look at tables and find out what the probability is within those ranges that they give you. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm not using the right terminology and, and whatnot, but basically this is the gist of the normal distribution. And why is this important? Because when you learn how to use the normal distribution the properly is associated with the normal distribution, then you can take any data set that fits this model, right? And first of all, understand that system and make predictions based on that system, right? So if you can take a data set and it fits the normal distribution, there's a tremendous amount of information we know, we understand uh, data sets that fit the normal distribution so just through mathematics without even really knowing what this system is you can do in, you can interpret the system by the numbers and then you can associate those numbers to something within that system to say oh wow this happens oh wow this happens oh wow this happens right so it gives us a tremendous amount of info on a subject matter uh, on a system that we're trying to understand as for the different types of questions man there's uh, there's a gazillion different ways that stuff comes at you for this there's something called a z number which is uh, 
the the standard deviation there's the variance of it that the normal distribution could be like this but it could be sharper right so that would still be a normal distribution but it's tighter okay 60 percent of values are within one standard deviation cool so 60 so oh, sorry 65 percent, 68 percent so in here thanks for finding that by the way so in here 68 percent of your data is between one standard deviation away and i forget what the symbol for standard deviation is is it the sigma is it is it or whatever this is thank you so much i hope my donation went through i don't know i didn't see it sorry i was doing this stuff thank you liam thank thank you for the donation okay i use this at work for working out shift patterns oh do you that's cool really you use a normal distribution for shift patterns that's crazy cool normal distribution has a property that sums of random variables tend to have which can be made exact normal distribution that's what makes it important now, let me just read that again well, kind of let's check it out normal distribution has a property that sums of random variables tend to have which can be made exact normal distribution that doesn't that, or rather sums of random variables have approximately normal distribution. oh sums of random variables so any no i can't be any random system you look at as a normal distribution that's not true race killer is it racer killer, I don't remember that. racer killer how do you calculate probability if you have a set of 39 and have and you have to get seven right oh if you have a set of 39 and you have to get seven right i don't know i don't know what that means set of 39 what seven right like numbers i don't know there's different formulas i don't know the formulas by the top of my head i'm sorry um i i i do uh, get uh, some of my students that go to university and need uh stats help usually whatever whatever program they're in you always usually do statistics right so they come to me every every now and then every few years go oh, Jijo, i need stats help so we sit there and i usually always have to look up the formulas read the read the uh the definition of the variables and they go oh yeah this is this and all of a sudden memory kicks in and we start doing the z table and start calculate uh, the probability of certain things for example the sum of 100 dice throws that's the sum of a hand of random variables yeah okay cool yeah yeah that fits through a normal distribution that's right that's right i thought if you're looking at a complete system i don't know if that's uh, yeah and you know what in nature i know there are uh, i don't know which system but i know i've studied them there are a lot of systems in nature that fit a normal distribution and supposedly they're like random is not the best oh no worries no worries uh how do you calculate it i uh, you you need more data you can't just say 39 and you have you have to get seven so that would be like saying we would need to know uh well, we don't need to know variance we need to look at the data set we need to calculate the mean so you need to have the mean you need to have uh, the standard deviation right like for example if this is let's say this is eight and this is seven and this is nine right so let's say you're collecting the actually let's do the numbers i guess Jeez, what are we doing this let's say this is seven this is six and this is eight right if you're throwing dice or whatever it is i don't know if the 68 percent of the time we could f figure it out here to get a seven it's six out of 36 and to get a six or an eight is five out of 36 right so plus 5 out of 36 and plus 5 out of 36 so this becomes 16 out of 36 okay so 16 out of 36 is not 68 percent of the time you're not going to get 7 8 or not or 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 um, 6 7 or 8 right so let's add uh, 4 uh, sorry 5 and 9 here as well right if you add 5 and 9 sorry if I'm going off a little bit hopefully if you guys uh, want to know what I'm doing here uh, we put out a video uh, with dice the probability distribution on six uh, for two six-sided die okay and uh, if you do chicho dice you'll get that video 
So that's sort of the distribution I would go in for with the probabilities. So getting a five or a nine, it's four out of 36 plus four out of 36. So that's eight more. Eight plus 16 is 24, okay? 24, is that 68% of the data? Let's do 24 divided by 36. 24 divided by 36. Boop. It's 66% of the data, 67% of it. That's pretty close, right? So if you wanna find out, if you have a distribution like this between five and nine, 68% of the time, you're gonna get five, six, seven, eight, or nine, right? However, the distribution might be different for something that's tighter. So for your example, if you're talking about 39, right? Seven might be, I don't know how it would be laid out, might be here where, you know, it's within the 68%, where it might be here, which is outside the 68%. So you need to know the standard deviation for it and stuff like this. You need the data set to be able to do it, uh, the problem. This is not sorry, uh, continuous. Da, 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 da. Oh, for dice, yeah, it fits good enough for our, our purposes, right? Race to kill. Uh, not sure about the, that case actually, since it's not continuous, but either way, sums of random variables are usually well, well approximated by normal distribution. That's cool. I didn't know that. What does it mean to standardize the x value? What does it mean to standardize the x value? I'm not sure, Liam. Standardize the x value. Anybody know what that means? Hopefully someone's already replied. Nothing is random. Everything is deterministic. You mean like if you throw one die, it will uh, be approximately evenly split between six, one to six? Uh, no. Uh, if we threw two die, uh, uh, mask of Raven. So we're talking about the probability of getting 2 to 12. 2, here, let me erase this. So the distribution for, actually it's not really a normal distribution, but you could approximate it by it, I guess. I don't know if that's kosher or not. But 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? Here's the two, two dice. Here's the number of ways you can get each one, right? Uh, six, three, two, one, uh, four, five. Seven is the most likely way, which has got six different ways. Six has five different ways. Eight has five different ways. Uh, five has four different ways. Four has three different ways. Two has two different ways. And sorry, uh, three has two different ways. And uh, two, there's only one way. And this mirrors over here, right? So is this a normal distribution? Not really, because it goes down like this, and it's discrete. You can only get two, three, you can't get four and a half on two dice and stuff. So it's not really, but it's a good way of talking about the data. Um, but I have multiple probabilities to take into, Martin, where's that coming from? Ba, ba, ba. Consideration, nah, it's two thirds, two thirds. Right, that's the idea. It should approximate a normal distribution the more throws uh, you do. Yeah, and this is based on infinite, uh, probably the distribution. How many times you'll get the seven, the six, the five, the whatever it is. Earthquake, Moncus. Yes, and the probability of three to 18, and uh, four to 24, and so on will more, more will will look more and more normally distributed a higher number of throws, right? Um, yeah, this distribution. If you do an infinite number of throws, then this is what this is what you end up getting, basically, right? For an infinite number of throws, this is the distribution you get with dice, right? And that's the way casinos operate. Casinos operate on infinite number of throws, right? And all they're doing is really is milking, taking a little bit off the top, right? For different bets, they take a bigger chunk off the top. So for two and 12, 
the payout is a lot more but they take a bigger chunk so it's a fool's bet here here is more realistic because the probability is that but i still play these sometimes because feeling right which any probability mappers as they don't go with it right but basically they take a little bit off the top casinos this is casino profit here right? profit casino profit right and it's trillions of dollars okay because gambling is not just about rolling dice it's everything right and what happens is in the limit casinos get everything because this is based on this is a distribution for one dice right based on what the probability is for an infinite number of throws but if you constantly do this and if they're constantly taking a chunk off in the limit you have nothing they get everything right so it's like a exponential uh, decay uh, exponential decay uh, it's yeah it's an exponential function right so basically you get this if you have a function right where what you put in your principal is equal to let's say they're only taking off two percent every time so they're giving you back 98% of your funds, right? 0 0.98 to the power of X. In the limit, in the limit, you have nothing. The first time you do it, you should only get back 98. If you put $100 in, you get $98. In the limit, F of X equals zero, okay? If in a binomial distribution, NP, oh yeah, the binomial distribution, NP and, and uh, times p minus one is greater than four it gets close to a normal distribution is that true okay so this thing um what can i erase uh, let me read a couple more just in case they're related to this and i'm going to erase something could you explain how to solve secondary equations secondary equations i don't know what you mean secondary equations are you talking about quadratic we're taking second derivatives uh strangely that dice probability looks like uh my busy period at work <laughs> nice <laughs> is it that's cool man so yeah you could i guess use a normal distribution on this well when people come in might essentially be a random variable variable which would be interesting sorry standardizing the x values is in the sigma uh is in the formula booklet uh oh yeah that's what it is here check this out uh okay i'm gonna erase this So the formula is this, uh, Liam says, Z is equal to X minus the standard deviation, uh, sorry, the mean of the distribution, so X, this guy, so that would be the mean, okay, divided by standard deviation, which I believe that's the symbol, okay? So basically means when you're doing your stats, okay, uh, Liam, when you're doing your stats, there's gonna be a Z table that you have in your exam or in the back of the book right and the z table is like this um, and there's all these guys right and what are the things on it uh, this is the z number so it would go um geez, i don't want to put the wrong numbers on there uh, so i'm not going to put any numbers on there right so basically what you're doing you look at the z distribution so for example if this was two if you get a z number of 2.6 right you would go to two and then the 0 0.0 0 0.1 0 point and you, this would be 0 0.6 and you look at this number here right and that would be what the and depending on the z number sometimes they give you both values on both sides sometimes they're giving you the value for one side of the of the thing right that's why it's very it varies depending on what books you're using or whatnot right they give you the number here as a decimal right so for example 68 if this is both of those contain 68 percent of data divide this by two you're going to get 34 percent of the data is a hint in here and the number here that you would see would be 0 0.34 right 
I think that's what it is. I haven't looked at a zip table for many years now, right? But that would be 34% of the data, right? So if they say 34% of the time uh, something occurs, the mean is this, and standard deviation is this, find X, you could plug 34%. Oh, no, that would be the Z number. You plug Z number there. You go to the table, find your 34%, find what the Z number is, put your Z number there, and then put your mean there, standard deviation, you could find where you are, what the X is, and stuff like this. So when you're asking a question of uh, how do you get, you know, what's the probability of getting 7 out of 39 or whatever it was, right? That's sort of what you end up doing, okay? The big scheme of things, the, the flow of the process of using the normal distribution. Da, da, da. Is there any way to find a volume of a cone without using volumes of uh, volumes of uh, integration? I know how to prove it that way, but I'd uh, be cool if there was uh, there were a way uh, without calculus. You know what? Uh, I think what you mean is a way without uh, the algebra of calculus, just the numbers, just the variables and stuff like this. Calculus is just uh, rate of change. So no matter what, there's calculus in there, right? But the way the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the standard way people do it. Uh, Mask of Raven, from what I understand, and I've, I've read the couple pages from this book, there's somebody that put out a book that teaches calculus strictly with shapes. Now, I don't know what's in the book, what it entails. At some point, I'd like to read that book. But there's, there is a book out there, at least one book out there. I'm pretty sure there's more. There's at least one book out there that I know of. Uh, I have it bookmarked. Uh, I can't access it right now. But uh, uh, there's a book that teaches how to find areas and volumes or volumes and just do calculus through shapes. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, I basically, uh, yeah, I basically does. Yes, the Z table is basically a calculation of these uh, integrals. Yeah. Could you explain weighted arithmetic mean? Oh, we're doing the statistics. Oh, my God. Weighted arithmetic mean. I can give you the general idea on it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take all this down. Okay. Any final question on this? Uh, just anything that I want to point out. Uh, thank you. I'm new here, so would you be able to tell me the schedule of your streams? You make math very understandable, so I would like to ask you more of my revision questions in the future. For sure, Liam. Right now, um, I don't have a set time, uh, day or time. Well, I do have a sort of day, but for the next four weeks, most likely, we're going to do at least one math stream, either on a Friday or a Saturday. Okay. I'm going to try to keep that schedule and so last week we did it on Saturday we did the math on Saturday this week we're doing it on Friday next week I'm not sure if we're gonna do it on Friday or Saturday uh, so um, there's two streams I'm doing for sure every week okay one is math one is current events and I'm switching it between Friday and Saturday okay that's the best I can do to narrow things down right now just because I'm really busy busy with students and uh, trying to do a fair bit of things going on and you know i have other people that need a little bit of attention in my life so uh, that's the best i could narrow it down right now okay uh, but if you check i do post that information i do announce the streams two to three days before uh they come up okay and if you scroll down on my twitch page uh, there's a little countdown that tells you when the next stream is and if you hit the events on the top menu thing um it takes you to what the events I've had scheduled up. Thank you so much. My pleasure, man. I'm, I'm glad it helped. I'm glad it helped. I'm sorry I couldn't go more specific and I wasn't using the right terminology, but it's the general gist of it. Uh, it's basically proved to be impossible, in fact. To prove this is very hard. It's essentially Herbert's third problem. Wow, which one is this? Uh, let me read this. Uh, He's replying to Mask of Raven. Where's Mask of Raven? Mask of Raven. Is there any way to find the volume of a cone? Really? So the volume of a cone is uh, is basically impossible without the calculus, really. 
Liam, you have uh, the north of England. You from the north of England. That is, to prove it is impossible to compute the volume without cal calculus is very hard. Really, Racer Kill, I didn't know that. So when the book that they're using shapes from, they must be, well, it is calculus. I just, I need to read that book. I need to read that book. I think what I'm going to do is uh, learn, relearn calculus with that book if I can track it down. Maybe, maybe. Uh, weighted arithmetic mean. Okay, let's do this. Oh yeah, the binomial distribution. Let me, let me just mention something about the binomial distribution because it came out. Uh, weighted arithmetic mean and binomial. So there was uh, someone commented about the binomial uh, distribution. The binomial distribution is basically this. Uh, when you only have two choices, right? right? Black or white. If you want to think about heads or tails there's only two choices flipping a coin is a really good example rolling a dice and saying even or odd that's a really good example right so there's systems out there which only have two choices or you can narrow things down categorize things so there's only two choices right when it comes to that they say uh, one of the choices you would say n and the other one the probability of n and the other one you would say the probability of n minus one right so if you're flipping a coin right the probability of getting a head so probability of a head is one out of two and the probability of not a head would be uh, a tail would be a half as well right Let's put the equal sign here okay now you can categorize things differently as well you could, you could say when you're rolling a dice one two three four you could group as the first outcome and five and six would be the second outcome right so the probability of one this group would be four out of six four out of six okay and the probability of the second group would be two out of six okay now one thing you can do Liam, just don't be a so one other thing you can do is this let's assume you just say probability of getting something is 68 percent right what's the probability of not getting that thing that could be your other choice so the probability of i would be 0.68 right and the probability of not i would be one oops i wrote this wrong i think it's one minus n isn't it one minus n or n minus one i don't know i don't know if i'm using the terminology correctly right it would be one minus 0 0.68 okay we should just do that and you find out what that is that's 32 0 0.2 so probably of not getting i would be 0.32 i just want to add to that a little bit um, that is to prove that uh, that is to prove it is impossible to compute the volume without calculus of uh, London. Uh, you can't compute the area of circle or rather disk without calculus either. Cool. Just don't be a da, da, da. arsenal fan. <laughs> nice. Oh, wow. It's not even possible to prove a pyramid's volume without calculus or other similar methods due to the uh, Hilbert's third problem, let alone a cone. Awesome. Thank you. That's very cool. I didn't know that either. I didn't know that either. I might have known it. I totally forgot it. I totally forgot it. Uh, weighted, weighted arithmetic mean. Okay. Weighted arithmetic average. Oh man, I should look this up before I do it. Uh, for those of you that know already, okay, I gotta look this up to make sure. I'm, uh, let me tell you what I think, what I have in mind, and I'm gonna check it before we go on anymore. It's basically saying that it's not enough to take the average of something. You have to put another factor in there. You have to weigh the the variable. One of the examples. What's one of the examples that I have? Um, probability. Probability of everything is not the same. Uh, 
I'm trying to come up with a real life example and I can't think of one right now. Uh, my apologies. But let's assume you had six possible outcomes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. It's just like die. So it's really important to have, uh, what's it called? Uh, a fair die. Fair die basically means the probability of each one of these coming up is the same, right? Probability of two, probability of three, probability of four, probability of five, probability of six is all the same, okay? So the probability of one would be one out of six, uh, one out of six, one out of six, one out of six, one out of six, and uh, one out of six, right? A, a dice that is not fair could be balanced where the probability of one could be, this would be a fair die, fair die, and a not fair die, not fair, could be the probability of one would be 0 0.5 out of six, probability of two would be 0.5 out of six, 0.5 out of six, right? And then the probability of these guys would be 1.5 out of six, 1.5 out of six, 1.5 out of six. Okay, the total is still six out of six, which is one, right? Yeah, but it's not balanced, it's not fair. You can have systems like this. Let me read, make sure I'm going on the right road. Uh, an example of this would be uh, you want the average a grade for a student, but you have six quizzes and one. Ah, oh, perfect, that is exactly what we end up doing. Uh, uh, you'd uh, weigh the final more. That is exactly it. I'm trying to figure out where I would use it, right? That's exactly where we use it. Uh, these streams make me want to learn more math. Awesome, awesome. Same. It makes me realize how much I know and how much I'm utterly ignorant of at the same time. Me too, because I learn a lot from these guys, right? So this would be something that's not fair, right? Or you could think about it this way. the These guys are weighed more than these guys or these guys are more important of the than these guys it doesn't apply to the fair dice because you're usually cheating if you're not trying to make the dice unfair but as uh, uh, mask of raven says you could do it this way right let's assume you're writing six tests right one two three four five six tests in your class I'm very good at basic math, but rusty in other areas. Yeah, I tell you the truth, me too. But my basic math sort of functions as well, right? The camera is not focusing. So let's assume you have six, uh, six exams you're writing for the year, right? And let's assume exam number three. Uh, should we do six? Should we distribute this? Uh, no, yeah, let's do six. Let's assume exam number three is worth 25% of your mark and exam number six is worth 30% of your mark which is a possibility the reason being is this could be your midterm if you're doing a class right so test number one test number two test number three is chapter three plus one and two so it should be way more right test number four test number five are standalone chapters test number six would be the whole year Okay, and if we want to make the whole year, let's make this one 35%. Make it worth a little bit more, right? So right now, this and this is 50, 60%, right? And you make every other test worth 10%. Okay, oops, 10%. 10% and 10%. The finals usually for it depends. Some places I've wrote exams where the finals actually a hundred percent of your test. For me, it's actually 40, 60, and 100 depending. Yeah, should we make it 40? Let's make this 40. Sure, let's make this 40 and make this 20. 20 and 40 percent, right? Okay, I'm very so let's assume now all the test marks they're not going to give you tests where. This only has 10 questions, 10 questions, 20 questions, 10, 10, 40 questions. They could, right? <laughs> They're really lazy about the calculation, right? But usually each chapter has their own types of questions they ask, right? So each one's gonna be out of a different grade, different number of questions. 
So let's assume the first test had 30 questions. The second test had 40 questions. The midterm had 40 questions. This one had, let's say, 20 questions. This one had 20 questions. And the final, let's say, had 40 questions. Okay. Let's assume on the first test, you got 20. On this test, you got 30. On this test, on the midterm, you kicked ass. You got 38. You studied hard, right? On this test, you were flying high. You didn't really feel like studying. You felt you knew it all. You had failed it. You got five out of 20. Should have studied, should have studied, right? Let's assume you were totally destroyed, distraught. You were, oh man, I can't believe I only got five percent and you were really depressed and you didn't have the energy to work but you work yourself up you got 10 out of 20 here and you finally kicked into gear you said no 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 i gotta do well i gotta do well and you got 35 out of 40 on this one right good job so what you need to do now is figure out what percent each one of these is right so what you could do is figure out the percent here which is I should have picked numbers that came out better, but uh, did these ones come out better? Uh, 40, no, they don't. So <laughs> we're just gonna do this, right? Oh God, I'm gonna use a calculator. I don't wanna use a calculator, but let's do it anyway. Let's use a calculator. How's our time factor? Yeah, we're good. Good, 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 good. So this is basically two divided, well, this is 0.67, 0. You know, let's write it as a percent, right? 67 percent. This is 75 percent. 38 out of 40. 38 divided. Oops. 38 divided by 40 is 95 percent, right? Oh, 95 percent. This is one out of four, so it's 25 percent. This is 50 percent, and 35 divided by 40 is 87.5 percent okay now there's multiple ways you can do this figure out what your total grade is right you could you could standardize these right put everything to the same weight right the other what's the formula i can't remember the formula for there's a formula like you don't really need to it, but let me follow the uh, get the exact uh, terminology. And that way I'm not writing formulas that are uh, silly with the variables all whacked. Uh, maybe where's the formula? Oh, let me do a formula. formula. You got to do sigma notation and Hey, where is it? There it is. That's the one we want. Is it? Statistics made easy. Six is got to ace. What? That one doesn't look like familiar to me. That's the one I want. Uh, is the weighted mean? There we go. Doop. Weighted mean is the allocated weighted value is the observed value. Okay, so this is one formula. I hope this is the correct. This doesn't seem like w is w what we use yeah there's a lot of formulas saying it's w okay we're going to use w okay so weighted mean is this let me bring out the chat so i know if there's anything being said it's in the sum the sum of each percentage multiplied by the weight yeah yeah okay so basically the formula is this let me write down the formula it's x weighted right is the sum of that times that divided by the sum of the weighted is it i what is that t that's gotta get a better yeah it's t that they're using t okay is blurry little guy oh here's another one i like this one number of period no that's not it this is the one i don't know how to calculate it oh i like this one better 
sum of that. Oh, that's just the average. That's not the weighted average. Here it is. Wx. You don't even need these sub sub things in there. Okay. Well, you do sort of. You need the sum. You need to do it, right? So, basically, oops. Let me bring this up again. <laughs> I say, I say, we don't want to do cat. This is statistics and stuff, and people bring up statistics. Hilarious. So, the sum of this thing, this basically becomes this, right? So, you multiply them and add them, right? So, what do you multiply? You're gonna figure out. Da, 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 how are we gonna do this? Um, oh yeah, it's better add up. Seventy percent, ten. Uh, yeah, you could do it this way. How should we do it, gang? Should we go 67 times 10? Because that's the percent that it's worth, right? So we could do it this way. Should be able to anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong. So the average the student got was 75.7% by my calculus. Let's check it out. So what you would do is you would go 67. Oh, I shouldn't put it that small. 67%, and that's worth 10% of your mark, right? So if it was 10% of the mark, this whole thing added up, adds up to 100% of your mark, right? So what you could do, you could consider 10% to be 10 marks, right? So what you would do, you would go, the average for this would be 60.67 times 10, 0 0.67 times 10, plus 0 0.75 times, here, let's just put these in brackets, times uh, 10, and then plus, 0 0.95 times 20 and so on and so forth to 0 0.875 times 40 all of it divided by uh, the weight which is 100 i guess right i got 66 i had to say 67 <laughs> i better i guess i better do mine right let's check it out uh, well, that's 0 0.67, that's 0 0.75, 0 0.95 times 20 is going to be, uh, 20 is going to be 19. So this one's going to be uh, 6.7, that one's uh, 7.5, that one's going to be 19, this one's going to be 2.5, this one's going to be five and that one's going to be 0.875 times uh, 40 35 oh what am i doing I, oh yeah 40 percent. that's right oh yeah i made it out of 40 that's why i made it easy but that's a mean calculation is so this is in the weighted mean 0. 0.67 plus 7.5 plus uh, 19 plus uh, 2.5 plus 5 plus uh, 35 so I got 75.7 yeah 75.7 okay I I got the same number as uh, mask of Raven okay so if you do this you end up, and this is over 100 because the total is over 100, right? The WT, the weighted, whatever the percent you got. The, I don't know if it's weighted. What do they call this? I don't know. Weighted, what are they referring to? Particular weight of a certain thing. So it's the weight of that guy, right? So you do this, you get 75.7%. Okay, that's the weighted average. If you didn't do a weighted average, you wouldn't get the right number right because you would just add all this up and divide by six so if you didn't do a weighted average and said if you thought oh 67 percent here had the same value as 87 percent over there had the same value as 25 percent this would be 0. 0.67 uh, oops hold on a second 0. 0.67 plus 0. 0.75 plus 0.95 plus I don't even need to do point but I am plus 0.5 plus 87.5 equals this and then divide by six uh, 
I divided by six? Oh, what am I doing? Uh, no, divide by. Oh, what? No, jeez, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, yeah, the average. Sending me sixty <laughs> plus seventy-five plus ninety-five plus twenty-five because my calculator I punched in something wrong. Fifty plus eighty-seven point five. Yeah, that's better. Divided by six, I was getting wacko numbers. If you didn't do a weighted average, that means your number, your percent was 66.6%, .6%, right? Which is inaccurate. Okay. Mask wins, mask wins. Um, what, uh, uh, for what age group is this math in? I don't know when did they in my part of the world they used to teach it in grade 12 math that's one of the reasons I learned this stuff uh, many years ago uh, well I learned it when I was going to university but I forgot it and I relearned it right but unfortunately in my part of the world they took this out of the math curriculum at the basic pre-calculus math curriculum they're now reintroducing it they're bringing in just this year they're introducing statistics classes and I'm telling my students to take those classes because it's really important right but for me for the last 10 years I haven't had the opportunity to teach this because they took it out of the curriculum just imagine they took statistics out of the curriculum one of the most important things you need to learn in mathematics to be able to function within our society they took it out of the math curriculum in high school insanity right insanity so if you didn't do a weighted average you got 66.6% .6 average if you did do a weighted average, you got 60, 75.7% average, which is way better. This would be appropriate for anyone who knows how to add, multiply, and deal with basic data. Uh, I don't know what age that would be. Yeah, basically, mask of Raymond, that is 100% correct. And you have to understand what, how to analyze systems, right? Why it is that you're doing this. But yeah, all you need is addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and understand what percentages are okay i can't believe we think only high school high schoolers can do this yeah i stopped going after uh ninth grade i started my business and then i sold it good i'm glad i hope you did well but this is good to know maybe you could have sold your business for a lot more if you knew this maybe maybe or decided not to sell and went wow look at what's going on i could do I could take it to the moon, right? I could take it to the moon. Fun. This may be a very vague question and off topic, but I have a desire to pursue a degree in mathematics. Which type of math degree should I go into for the most prospects in the future uh, stats? Uh, no, no, let me rephrase that. Electrical engineering is huge. Uh, and if you do math, you can go into electrical engineering. Uh, you can go into any type of engineering in general but uh, when it comes to uh, see, let me rephrase I don't want to direct you down the wrong path uh, there's a lot of different branches of mathematics okay there's a lot of different branches of mathematics uh, but statistics is one place that's used in many different fields many different fields okay maybe insurance companies maybe governments maybe corporations maybe local communities trying to figure out what their community is involved in what they want to do to to everywhere statistics has very very deep tentacles within our society so this would maybe have the most doors most options for you uh, maybe there might be other people that might know a little bit more programming is huge of course but you have to be willing to code anyone see the movie 23 which I'm, yeah i saw that movie i liked it it was fun he starts doing math on everything and always end up with the number 23 uh, the end and it drives him nuts yeah there's a lot of mathematicians that have gone crazy not that jim i don't think jim carrey was a mathematician or not. i can't remember but we're human beings uh, uh sick as uh, 
Armenan, Armenan. Uh, we mentioned this earlier uh, in the stream. Human beings, we're pattern recognition machines. We're so good at it. We find patterns where there are no patterns. And if you don't correct your mistake, you will go crazy. Okay. My BIL is a software engineer analysis and he majored in math and taught himself Java. Nice. Yeah, once if you learn math, you can teach yourself anything. And, and English, in English or any natural language you have. But if you have a math core base understanding, you can literally learn anything. Okay. If you put your mind to it. Statistics, number theory, specializing in cryptography, lots of types of applied math. Computer science is very mathematical, steady algorithms. Financial math is also good, yeah. And all financial math too, statistics is a huge part of that, right? Yes, I was interested in becoming a data analysis. Yeah, data analysis is, I love data, personally. We are programmed to find patterns in order to try and understand them, yeah. It's self-preservation too, right? If you're back in hundreds of thousands of years ago, right even animals do mathematics statistics right if an animal you know if a tribe eats a certain type of food and most of you know whoever eats that food gets sick that's math math, math mathematics pattern recognition people go oh that food is not good don't eat it you die right it's self-preservation need more math and movies need more math and movies i agree and good math man i've seen some movies that have horrendous math in them i look at them i go what the happy friday zare happy friday brother happy friday i gotta pop a cuckoo oh i can't pop a cuckoo my fingers are all uh, dry racy so i don't want to eat that stuff i can't touch i should have brought a fork to eat my cuckoos uh, actuaries make a lot of money that's in uh, that is stats yeah actuarials is huge almost two hours are we having live streaming yeah we have been cool fun 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 um, one problem i find with today's schools we don't educate them nope we make the kids learn what we want them to know and and we make them fear what we don't want them to know if you let a kid play around with coding for pc and programs this kid will be a genius at the age of 12 100 agree the potential in each individual is almost limitless but we don't nourish that potential 100 agree welcome to our streams brother or sister right <laughs> that is actually one of the main theses of the work i do uh, i've been producing for the last i don't know how long now 14 years why not go beyond two hours uh, why not go beyond i lose my voice a little bit um, i do i do streams with students uh, and in person so there's only a certain amount of talking i can do in the summertime we might hannah but uh, right now my energy level just dictates two hours and i like the two hour session it allows me to do other things and i really uh, want to like uh, you know get back into hardcore editing videos as well i know i haven't been putting out too many edited videos just because i'm busy at work it's end of school year and i'm doing the live streams and stuff but that's one of the reasons Anna. but we will at some point do marathon streams 100 percent there's an excellent william gibson novel called pattern recognition oh cool very true but then you're in the insurance industry yeah <laughs> very lucrative industry though huh? Eh? Could I use a math degree to become an electrical engineer or would a physics degree be more useful? Uh, depending what type of electrical engineer, I've known people that have gotten their PhD in electrical engineering. A lot of the books that you saw that you might have seen when I'm showing you my book collection, they're basically specifically electrical engineering books, but it's not physics, they're mathematics. So electrical engineer, I believe if you're going hardcore electrical engineering, mathematics is the core you want to learn, not physics. Uh, but people can correct me uh, on that uh, it's mathematics you want an engineering degree would be appropriate here you'd be dealing with specific math concepts there an electrical engineering degree would probably be best for electrical engineering yeah yeah true electrical engineering degree but th that being said 
I've known people that got math degrees that have gone into the electrical engineering department and gotten their PhDs okay and they were hardcore math so can you do a stream on medicinal herbs we've done Hannah we've done uh, three streams so far on uh, entheogens uh, and we we can again I know Eduardo really likes them and some other people really like them right makes sense who will win the Grey Cup I don't know I don't follow the sports very much Hannah heavy math and electrical engineering also should probably know a lot regarding the physics of electricity uh, to a certain degree uh, mask off mask of uh, Raven right uh, depending on if you're doing coding uh, uh, what do you call it uh, uh, not coding uh, uh, dealing with prime numbers a lot and uh, security if you're dealing with security and communication and stuff like this that's electrical engineering but communication but very little to do with electricity it's about the mathematics behind it right is physics isn't physics an application of math yeah basically math is numbers electricity is numbers if you are good with numbers you're good with pretty much everything that involves basic math like building houses landscaping plumbing and so on yeah it also involves a bit of cal uh, calculations radishes grew so fast this year 1.5 weeks and they were popping up tasted amazing in the salad yeah nice I've, I've been getting some radishes Hannah from the CSA we belong to so they started giving giving us radishes uh, for the last couple of weeks uh, and I'm assuming today we're gonna pick up another batch as well so I'm assuming we're gonna have radishes again and they're amazing they're really delicious right now they're radishes and we use the radish tops in the cuckoo we made, right? In this thing we made uh, during the live stream on Monday, right? It's got radish tops in there, so it's super good. Don't forget the garlic. Go, oh, garlic. I, I want to start growing garlic. I am still hoping for another cliff diving video. Oh, me too, Martin. Me too. Me too. Maybe this summer, if I get a chance to go cliff jumping, very healthy and very good. I suck so badly at physics before I learned my math and now so much interesting and cool with the background math knowledge yeah how much is the CSA how much do you get a week uh, we paid 500 uh, we paid 250 at the beginning of the season we're gonna pay another 250 halfway through the season and at the beginning we're not getting very much we're getting like a big salad bag we're getting radishes we got uh, eggs we're getting half a dozen eggs and uh, we got something else last week too so we got four different things last week which isn't very much but starting in about a month we're gonna get a lot more uh, a little salad oh we got kale as well last week we get kale we get greens we get herbs we get eggs we get radishes we got root vegetables and stuff so it's, it's pretty good I'll show you guys what some of my CSA hauls are once we start getting more you grow your own vegetables and uh, right now not my own vegetables we grow on our own herbs some of them we have lots of mint uh, we have rosemary um, we don't have parsley and stuff set up we just haven't set them up but I do somehow have some other herbs that we're growing uh, don't forget let's do uh, token eight oh token eight Z reading during the summer fall yeah that's right sorry thanks for the reminder remind me again during the summer we do We'll set out on the patio. I'm in the process of fixing up the patio right now. Spring cleaning, fixing up patio. We had bugs in the, on our plants, indoor plants. So I've been trimming cuttings. I got things in cuttings and killed a lot of bugs by hand and spray. So we're rearranging our plants. That took a lot of time. Uh, so we'll sit down in the patio and do a A to Z reading of token. But remind me again for sure, man. Do you find it worth? It's worth it, or is it a bit pricey? Um, right it used to be a little bit pricier but prices have gone up for uh, vegetables greens uh, it's pretty much at par with everything else sometimes it's good sometimes it's a little bit more but it's at par with what we would be spending on vegetables but they're local they're organic they're taste phenomenal we're supporting the community uh, and just the whole ritual of every week going there and getting your vegetables and there's a they grow other things 
So we go inside the farm and look at different things that they're growing. We can buy tomato plants there. and It's, it's worth it. It's worth it. Definitely worth it. Way better than walking to a grocery store and buying things. Right? Like, and the eggs are like, you know, two days old eggs. The vegetables have been picked like a day or two days before. There's zero transportation. So other than us going there, sometimes riding our bikes to get there, we get the stuff, right? So it's phenomenal. This Wednesday, we will be victorious, <laughs> as Martin says. Uh, did you hear the European Union new law about selling eggs? They made it illegal for stores markets to sell eggs that is seven days before the expiration date. So now the world needs to throw more edible foods and waste even more crazy. Or you got sale, lots of sales. Just go buy lots of eggs and make lots of cuckoo. Crazy, crazy. Oh my God, Captain Picard with a beard. That's right. Make it so, number one. <laughs> How those four year transform? Oh my god, four year transform. I, I actually, for my thesis, bachelor's thesis, I use four year transform, but I can't tell you right now, man. I would have to look that stuff up hardcore, hardcore. Don't waste food. My local Tesco sends the out of uh, date food to YMCA and hostels and areas. <laughs> nice, nice. That's good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> candy players glad you like glad you like man give me the cuckoo give me the cuckoo i gotta i'm gonna eat some food as soon as we finish this stream i gotta go wash my hands i should have brought a fork right i gotta have some cuckoo we got like three four more of these left we're gonna eat today with salad and stuff it's gonna be delicious fun gang that was a good stream we started off politics and stuff we got into mathematics that was fantastic so i'll definitely load this on youtube the first part was politics economics I, politics i try not to load on too much politics on youtube because the algorithms are kicking in and my view counts are going down because i'm talking politics and i'm not politically correct right i am who i am it's just i, I refuse to uh buy into the bs right but i'm cuckoo for cuckoo i'm cuckoo for cuckoo um but we did a fair bit of mathematics so i will definitely load this on youtube uh, and bit shoot okay in sweden the stores throw it in the bin and then trash man comes and picks it up and throws it away some people have started dumpster diving they get in inside the dumpsters and take as much food as they can but that's illegal yeah same here it's illegal in my part too that's why uh, I think there's a law where they have to lock their dumpsters if they don't lock it they can be fine and stuff like this and I don't know crazy tomorrow at a.m. Pacific time tomorrow 8 a.m. Pacific time we do a live stream on current events I'm so bored at work oh Hannah you forgot your tea today no I brought a tea I just been talking a lot so I've been drinking Even though it's, it's gotten cold, so I can pound it back. Even though Twitch keeps on saying I should be drinking more water. The world needs more chichos and more cuckoos. Thanks for the love, Leo. <laughs> Thanks for the love. I'll keep it going for as long as I can, man. I'll keep it going for as long as I can. And thank you for the support, Liam, uh, for the donation and stuff. Okay. Um, okay, gang. We'll call the stream tomorrow morning at 8 a.m uh current events 8 to 10 a.m we're going to do current events and next week again for sure we'll do one math and one current events and i'll try to slip in um more live streams mid next week not this week but mid next week as well okay we'll see what we can end up doing maybe a food stream in there somewhere any vacations planned for the summer trip? no i might go to uh, music events if i can but i I really have a lot of work that I want to do for the content we're creating here Hannah I got math stuff that I've laid out that I would love to get to I just need to get to 8 a.m. Los Angeles time Martin yeah 8 a.m. Los Angeles time current events tomorrow morning okay aside from that gang, uh, thanks for being here uh, thanks for the questions thank you for the answers thank you for the information providing information that we didn't know I didn't know or you you know some of you didn't know here uh it's a great avenue to share information and help each other out right 
and uh, if you can make it i'll see you guys uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m okay bye for now i hope you have a fantastic friday and a fantastic weekend see you guys in the next stream gang cds are we're out of here thank you for the time sampe sampe all right see you guys good stream take care chicho you too you too perfect why my pal? Can you be my lawyer? Wait, <laughs> I missed the lesson. It'll be up tomorrow on uh, on BitChute and YouTube, brother. So you can check it there. Okay, bye for now.